All right, so you can see um, we've got uh, a little more progress here. Um, there's the little terminal board, our Grant Searle um, prototype terminal board. I've uh, since released the Gerbers and I'll uh, put them down there for you guys to take a look at uh, if you'd like. Um, updated the board, added some uh, mounting holes. Sorry, I got a lot of stuff on the desk going on right here. Raspberry Pi, we'll talk about that later. Um, this is my Z80 MBC2. It is a little um, little single board computer with just the TTL interface. It's got a real-time clock module. It's got an SD card module, general purpose I.O. pins, and uh, serial bus for the Arduino is uh, pushed all the way through to the board. So I guess you can uh, reprogram this guy here um, to drive just about anything you could drive on that serial bus, which is kind of nice for a, a Z80 computer. It, uh, it runs the Z80 at 10 megahertz, um, uses a clock divider inside the Arduino. It uses the Arduino's uh, clock to drive the Z80. There's a, another logic chip, but otherwise everything, EEPROM, uh, all the control logic, everything is done inside the Arduino, and then it's got 128K of SRAM. Um, and then that chip on the top just drives the serial general purpose I.O. pins, not, excuse me, not serial general purpose I.O. pins, um, programming header for the Arduino there, and then a regular old TTL serial interface. The whole thing is through whole components. Um, just about the only thing I don't like about the board is the way they did these modules, um, which is trivial actually to change. I mean, you, you just put whatever kind of header you want on there, um, and and you can you can pretty much you know use your regular Dupont wires, whatever you want to do. Um, to route those um, wherever it's kind of my new project that I'm working on trying to do some stuff with this learn some Z80 coding um, I've got some news about this guy here so um, it's it's working, which is great, um, with a couple of caveats. Um, so we can bring up directory listing off the SD card. Um, this is uh, CPM version 3. Uh, so with that we get basic, um, Microsoft basic. But you can actually boot this thing into BASIC, you can boot it into um, Pascal interpreter, um, I think it's got a fourth interpreter. Um, really neat little machine. Um, one of the problems that we ran into, um, you want to write a little program here, um, and you want to hit shift uh, shift in quotes, look at what we get. So that means the keyboard coding is set for a UP UK keyboard layout. So then the quotes are under the 
number two, um, which isn't a huge problem if you know what keys to press, but there's some very key key combinations that you can hit that don't quite work out. Um, for everything, particularly with doing escape sequences and other things like that. So, um, what I'm going to show you guys here, oops, did it again. Um, oops. is the problem I ran into. Okay, so we'll run the program. And as you can see, it runs here, and then eventually we start skipping carriage returns. So, as you can see, you get extra periods there where there shouldn't be. So started thinking about the problem. It, it could be a couple of things. It could be, one, the character interface inside the Arduino that runs the I.O. as the I.O. controller, this guy here, um, could be overflowing and getting locked up. I don't think that's the case. Here's why. The memory in it is big for only moving 100 or so K per second. I think it's probably more likely, and I've actually emailed Grant about this, um, what is probably happening is it is getting to the end of the screen and the terminal is auto scrolling. So when it gets to the end of the screen, um, it uh, throws some periods. And I've actually done some testing um, on this other terminal interface here. This is a Raspberry Pi running uh, the Pi GFX bare metal serial terminal and then I have it hooked up to this little shift register, or not shift register, uh, it is a high to low level shifter um, because the Raspberry Pi is 3.3 volts logic and the uh, Arduino chip that handles the serial port is 5 volts uh, so you have to adjust the voltage and these little boards from China are really useful because um, the little MOSFETs, I could I could be wrong but I think that's what they are, um, and you supply them with a 5 volt source and a 3.3 volt source and when the opposing source comes in from either side it triggers the 5 volt source to flow through on the appropriate signal pin on the other side. It's really neat. Um, so basically you always end up with the exact amount of voltage that you need and they're very very fast much much faster than we're running this interface at so we don't have to be concerned that they're gonna miss a signal and it and it, and it actually works um, so that's kind of neat um, it's not exactly the purpose that these are designed for but they work um, and they're very cheap, like less than a dollar a piece. I think I got 10 for for like five bucks or something like that. Um, and they, they, they even came with the little header pins. I didn't even have to pull those out of stock. I just, I just soldered the ones that were in the bag right on there. Um, so when I ran tests on this guy, um, I found that the same thing was happening. So it could be true, and this 
uh, the other thing is, this has even more memory than the little Arduino. So I, I really, really don't think that this is overflowing and this is overflowing. I think what's happening is it gets to the bottom of the screen and the terminal scrolls, but the program is also scrolling. So when that happens, um, you start getting these extra periods down here. Um, so what I thought I'd try to do today uh, is write a little program um, and test it out. We'll make a more advanced program that just counts to the end of the screen and then continues to scroll the periods to see if it's going to keep doing that. And uh, we can even try to fill the screen with periods. Put a little semicolon after it so that it fills the whole screen with characters. It should be really, really obvious if we're overflowing the bus at that point because the program will still be running really fast. So I'm going to write that real quick and then I'll just do another recording here. Okay, so here's the little program I wrote. So how this works uh, sends a control character to clear the screen. I don't know why CLS isn't working in Microsoft Basic um, under CPM. It does work when you just um, when you just boot directly to basic but I, I booted to CPM so I just sent the control character that clears the screen. Um, this for statement prints out the lines to the bottom of the screen. This is a carriage return so what will happen is it'll do a carriage return before it starts printing the periods so that every time it gets to the end of the line when it hits 79 characters it does a carriage return and then shoots a period on the screen. These are the terminating next statements for the for statements. This sends it back to the top so that the program just runs forever until you, you send a break. Um, so when you run this, um, taking into account the fact that the um, terminal is going to auto scroll, essentially what this does is it never reaches the end of a line because it's 25 characters to the end of the line and it never reaches the bottom of the screen. Um, so in essence we're just letting the terminal do all the scrolling. Basic is not interpreting any of the scrolling um, through its programming. And when you run the program it fills the screen with periods There's never any corruption. We don't get anything, but it just keeps executing to the end of the screen, and it fills the screen. Um, so I think that's probably more than likely what's going on, and that's Grant's feeling. Um, and he was going to take a look at a few things and get back to me. I uh, haven't heard back from him yet. Um, but if I do, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely let you guys know. Um, the, uh, next thing I want to talk about is, um, having trouble, um, so the programming with this guy is actually in assembly language, and this is the video controller chip. This is what creates the video signal. There's probably not anything wrong with that. Um, but what I have here is um, the wrong key map on this chip. Um, and I need to figure out um, how to change it. And I would like to uh, write code um, that lets me do it with a pull-up or just lets me set it um, some other way through control characters would be ideal um, because then you know I don't have to change my schematics 
Um, so what I'm going to do uh, moving forward on my next project, which is to put this guy into a housing, um, is in the process of working on figuring out what was going on with this, um, I discovered this project, um, which I actually, I like a whole lot. Um, so more to come on this guy here. Uh, I'm going to be putting this into a housing um, and, uh, making some, uh, maybe a custom PCB to do that, but first I have to make the prototype. Um, so that's, that's currently what I'm working on. Um, the, uh, last and final thing I wanted to show you guys with this little terminal board, um, and we're, we're going to reset here. It's hard to do through the viewfinder. Um, okay. So, uh, what this comes with is a bunch of disk sets. Um, and one of the things that you can run... Oops, not in basic anymore, Dave. All right, one of the things you can run is Turbo Pascal, which I know an awful lot about. Um, and I wanted to try it out. Um, and so I set this thing up for ANSI. Um, And what's great about Turbo Pascal is it has a full screen editor. But as you can see, if you hit enter, we get some screen corruption. So played around with it for what was probably way, way too long. Um, and came to the conclusion it's probably missing some control codes uh, for full screen editors and I uh, consequently don't have those issues on this particular project um, so and this one this one is in color <laughs> so I'm I'm not I'm not abandoning this um, like I said I have put up the um, the Gerber files it, it does work um, pretty well with your PS2 keyboard and and display and the, the video quality is actually quite nice um, some screenshots on Grant's website of what it looks like on an actual monochrome CRT and it's pretty amazing um, so uh, probably come back to this after I learn a little bit more about playing around with these Arduinos. Um, I know how to program them. I know how to uh, program them, put code onto them, basically. Um, so that code that someone else has written. Um, I know how to kind of play around with some of the uh, C language that is on this little guy here. Um, I want to get a lot better at it. Um, and at some point, what I'd like to do is, uh, one, create um, the ability to switch the key maps with control codes, um, if I can, or pull up resistors if I have to, um, and two, kind of round out some of the ANSI character um, um, escape sequences that are required. I mean, the other thing that could be happening with the Pascal, and this is the, the other thing that Grant said, is that it could be doing the auto-scroll issue that we ran into with BASIC. Um, and then, you know, that's harder to fix. 
because um, you have to kind of understand how that all works. So, um, like I said, I'm not I'm not abandoning this. You can still get the files off Easy EDA, um, and I'll put the link in the description. Um, but I'm uh, I'm I'm shifting over to this guy here. I'll probably put the final finished thing on a Pi Zero because it, it to be really honest with you, doesn't require all that much power to operate. So, um, kind of a long drawn out video and probably gonna have to do way more editing on it than I did the last one. Um, so that's kind of frustrating, but uh, that's what I'm seeing and doing here and thanks for watching let me know what you guys think um, I still actually have a couple prototype boards um, blank boards with no chips or anything on them if anybody's interested let me know um, if you can pay the shipping I can I can send them to you um, I was gonna email Grant and see if he wanted one um, I don't know if he would be interested um, but it was really, really fun. Um, I learned a whole bunch about uh, designing PCBs, uh, what to do, what not to do. Um, learned about the software, learned how to better use my EEPROM programmer. Um, found a, actually, that's a good, good thing to to talk about too, I found a website for these um, these Arduinos um, that if you have a Mini Pro and you want to set the bits, um, the fuse bits on these chips, there's a website that you can go to and put in the model of chip you have and what your end result you want to be is um, on your fuse bits and it'll tell you what to click inside the Mini Pro. Um, and then I also um, when some updated firmware came out for this guy, I was able to use that Mini Pro's in circuit programming interface to program the Arduino to upgrade it, and that was pretty cool to learn how to do too. So, we're learning. <laughs> learning is always good. Um, as always, let me know if you guys have any questions, and uh, I'll see you next time.